what we're going to be talking about today is a bit of a god level finding from the world of biology it directly relates to how life developed when there was no life on this earth from just physical and mechanical forces biologists just managed to convert something very fundamental and make its structure change by just applying pressure to cells this is truly insane this isn't like applying selection pressure which is metaphorical it's a pressure to make cells evolve a certain evolutionary biological way in a genetic manner simply just pressed and compressed cells to create tissue like structures this is truly one of the most fundamental elementary and literally life altering discoveries in biology life altering not for you and me but definitely for biologists who study archaea for unicellular organisms even those that don't have a cell wall and well for life when we look at the kingdom of life as we study in schools for example we know that there are primarily five or six classifications depending on where you study there's of course the major kingdoms which are animals plants fungi and protists these four are common and if you're in north america you probably also learn about two more types two more kingdoms bacteria and archaea in india which follows the eurocentric uk british version of science known as the whitaker system we follow a classification that has a fifth kingdom called monera monera contains both bacteria and archaea these are all called kingdoms of life because this is the kingdom of life tree but of course the use of the word kingdom is also problematic now not necessarily for political reasons but mainly because of biological differences in how a kingdom should be classified but anyway moving on to the kingdoms animals and plants we know what they are and we also understand fungi of course all of these are multicellular organisms and they are made up of more than one cell they are eukaryotic meaning their cells contain a nucleus a rigid cell wall they have organelles and the opposite of eukaryotic is prokaryotic these are the organisms that are often classified under monera they are much more simple and primitive not only do their cells not have a nucleus there are also a lot of other these membrane bound organelles such as mitochondria that are missing from these cells prokaryotes are not necessarily microscopic even if they are unicellular many cells in fact come together to form mats and colonies and we can physically see them much like you know cyanobacteria that produce oxygen in the ocean but here's the crux of the differences in the primitive forms of life within the kingdom of monera archaea which is mostly prokaryotic falls under this category as does bacteria which is different from archaea what even are archaea they are archaic they are very 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 old and primitive and extremely simple forms of life they've existed since life existed on earth they are tiny unicellular microbial forms of life similar to bacteria just a quick note that we're not really talking about viruses here a couple of reasons one is are viruses even alive if they can only reproduce and function like a biological entity when they're inside of a host organism when they're outside they can't replicate they can't feed they can't they don't do anything but the other reason why viruses don't figure here and archaea don't really compare to them is because there are no known examples of species of archaea that behave like a pathogen which causes disease or infect others like a parasite instead they are helpful to us they are a part of several several ecosystems around the world including extreme environments but they are also present in the human body such as being a part of the gut microbiome which we are just beginning to understand in fact just like viruses attack bacteria viruses also attack and infect archaea we've identified hundreds of bacteria but substantially fewer archaea but they are microbial and they are everywhere including in extreme environments on the planet such as very hot places very acidic places and very alkaline places as well now archaea and bacteria have a similar cell structure but within the cell the components are entirely different Archaea don't have interior cell membranes they don't have a nucleus they don't have cellular organelles and they move around with a flagella they also reproduce through cell division and not really like release spores or anything at all 
And now we come to the core findings of the paper. Alex Bissin of Brandeis University, who's also the last author on the paper on this preprint, explained the team's experiments well. And I'm relying on his explanation, both for me to understand as well as for this video. Now, archaea cells are surprisingly soft. So Bissin's team decided to understand how they respond to mechanical and physical stresses on their cells, such as being physically compressed. What the team found was quite interesting. When the cells were squished, at one point, they stopped dividing and then they began to just grow larger and larger in size. And in the process, the most mind-blowing thing was observed. The cells begin to develop tissue-like characteristics that are very similar to epithelial cells like skin cells and also to like leaf cells. Multiple cells come together to form a colony and some still continue to replicate and divide. Upon zooming in, the team found something even more interesting. There were cells that were in contact with compression zones, so they were physically being compressed, where the pressure was being applied. But there was also a different group of cells that were not being directly compressed. However, they were setting themselves into a shape as if they had just been smushed, much like, you know, memory foam. The team even took it a step further. They burned some cells within these colonies through a laser, injuring them, and healthy cells then began to move collectively towards this region. So, these archaea are able to form tissue-like structures, but then why don't they so much? Why do they just swarm out and make mats? This too, the researchers were able to identify, and the culprit they pinpoint to is carotenoids. These are the yellow, orange, red pigments that give carrots their color and they are present in multiple forms of life. The team found that carotenoids act as what Beeson describes as prokaryotic cholesterol. When these pigments were absent, archaea stretched out to form films rather than compress and form tissues. They just swarmed out in the absence of these pigments. But does this mean that if these pigments are present, these tissue-like structures exist in the real world among archaea? Probably, but we need to look more. Now, the paper goes into many more technical findings. All of these are new findings and the paper will be linked below, of course. There's much more complexity to it and many more smaller, smaller technical details and minute discoveries that warrant more research. But... These preliminary findings are truly incredible and amazing. They provide early clues that will eventually become answers to the base questions we have about life on Earth. What could be the potential ways in which unicellular life developed into multicellular? How did prokaryotic develop into eukaryotic life? How did cells develop tissues in the natural real world? And so on. Incidentally, the biggest highlight of this paper yet again points to something called convergent evolution. Different forms of life independently evolve similar traits. These early findings show how various forms of primitive life could have independently evolved into all life as we know today under completely different but similar mechanical stresses and physical pressure exerted on their cell structures. Thank <laughs> you.